This video is sponsored by Into the AM. Do your Terminators look like they work in a bell tower? Well, introducing the brand new Terminator here to solve that issue. The old Terminators were fantastic models, but frankly, they get absolutely dwarfed by the newer ones. And also they get rid of that weird hunchback effect. I started off by scraping away all of these purity seals, which ended up being surprisingly more difficult than I expected as some of them were connected to multiple parts of the model. It's one of those very much so double-edged sword scenarios of the push-to-fit models. On one hand, they look awesome and have dynamic poses and are very easy to make. On the other hand, if you want to kid bash them, you have to do a lot of work to get around that. Word of caution, don't use a sharp butter knife. Wait, no, mine's as dull as a butter knife. Don't use a sharp one, it's not gonna end well. It often freaks people out when they see the way I use it, but mine's very dull. For some of these parts, I actually ended up using my pliers to essentially eat away at large pieces of plastic as opposed to using the X-Acto knife for every single piece of it. I also made sure to be quite careful with my pliers and now push them into the model, using the X-Acto knife to essentially clean away at the other smaller areas. Afterwards, I got out some sandpaper and I have no idea what grit it is for before anyone starts asking. It's honestly just felt quite soft and I felt like it would be a good enough grit just to polish some of the plastic areas. And there was a lot of polishing. I mean, uh, I made sure to try to clean up some of those incredibly messy areas. Also using some Tamiya Thin Cement to essentially liquefy those areas and try to melt them a little bit. Hopefully creating a much smoother plastic effect that is much more typical of the other areas of the model. The only difficult part about that is now I gotta make sure that I don't touch those areas. Otherwise, my fingerprint will essentially be left on there forever. I also really wanted to use this axe instead of the massive hand. However, I realized that the scale of it would look a little bit too weird. And these two back spikes are going to be the main thing that's going to sell this model as a Chaos model. As personally, the two most prominent things to me that tell me it's a Chaos Terminator are usually the tusks and the massive spikes on their back. It was also quite surprising that these very old Terminator spikes actually fit almost perfectly in the back area. I also found this really cool loincloth with a bunch of chains attached to it that I just felt like would be a perfect chaos bit. However, after I attached it, I realized that it was bulging out quite a bit. And at first, I tried cutting the loincloth itself, however, that older plastic is much thicker and much more difficult to work with. So instead, I opted in to actually cut into him instead. Afterwards, the loin cloth fell in perfectly and matched it exactly how I wanted it. I also had this really cool chain from the Belacar set that had this really cool servidor that I thought would make a really cool trophy for this Iron Warrior, which turned out really awesome. Going back to the scale thing, the difference between these two models was just absolutely astonishing. However, it also reminded me that I need to drill my barrels, otherwise this Terminator is not going to be able to shoot. I also used some of the thin cement to essentially liquefy some of the mold areas. I then grabbed the new Chaos Chosen set and found this really cool head that I thought would be a really And after detaching the ponytail as well as one of the bottom parts that was getting in the way, I tried it on and frankly, I just didn't like it. So instead, I went back to the original head. In today's video, I also made these two awesome kid bashes that I want to show you. However, while we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Into the AM. Thank you for sponsoring this video. They're currently running a bundle where you can get three shirts for $60, shirts like these, also shirts like these, with a massive graphic on the back, and a cool shirt like this, which actually matches the theme of the channel. But if you prefer simple designs, they also have basic ones. So make sure to click the link below using my code ADM, which will get you an additional 10% off that you can use in any of these awesome shirts that they have on their website. As well as they have some incredibly comfortable sweatpants that I've personally been wearing. And pick up yourself one of these awesome shirts. You'll be supporting the channel and making sure that future kid bashes will be bigger, better, because uh, these bottles are very expensive. <laughs> I mean, did you at least mention they're very comfortable? Yeah, I did. And a massive thanks to you for watching this segment and Into the M for sponsoring this video. For the second Terminator, I really wanted to give him one of those crazy power claws, as I felt like that would be a great way to once again distinguish him as a Chaos Terminator. And for this, I reached into the Horse Heresy kit of the Cataphrachi Terminator, and the scale of them was surprisingly not that different. However, there was going to be a lot of modification required to make sure that I'm actually able to fit it in there. So I made sure to measure twice and cut once when it came to the hand area. Afterwards, polishing the claw and removing some of the bits that essentially started to bulge out. And when I measured up against it, they actually became really close. All I had to do was just angle it a little bit and remove some of these purity seals that were just festering the model. Also, using a bit of spur goo to fill in a massive gap that essentially got created as a result of the missing fingers. And when I placed down the claw, I realized that I forgot something, which is to remove the thumb, which is an odd statement to say out loud. 
so I'm quite glad that my walls are soundproof. When I attached the power claw thumb, it looked a little bit funky. So I'm grabbing the sprue cutters again, pliers, whatever you want to call them, and cutting away at an angle that'll hopefully create a much more natural position for the thumb. And then using them to my thin cement to essentially smooth out the area. And personally, I think it looks really awesome. Now came the dreaded part of once again having to remove an insane amount of purity seals and just insignia. This miniature just had so many things I had to remove. And as a result, I had to send them down to at least have an effect of there being a clean cut. And so without wasting any more time, I got back to sanding. And once that was done, I decided to remove the head because I had different plans for that. But for now, I reattached the arms in a pose that I thought would work really well for this model, which is quite a relaxed at ease pose as if he's beginning to walk forward. I did consider doing a similar action pose to the other one, however, it felt like they would look too similar. Luckily, I also had an extra Terminator head from the Chaos set, which looked phenomenal. Also, unfortunately, the process, I somehow managed to damage the flashlight a little bit, so I had to put it back in place. And I gotta say, these chonkers look phenomenal. I'm really looking forward to painting them. For my color, I decided to go with Exhaust Manifold, mainly because it has a yellowish tint to it, and apparently Iron also has a yellowish tint to it. Never knew that. And it's Bavalejo Metal Color. They're technically airbrush paints, but I never found issues with them. Afterwards, grabbing my $2 makeup sponge and applying the metallic paint to it. I'm imagining this is essentially going to be my base coat and create this very dark shaded look effect that later on I will build up and create a much more interesting metallic look. Personally, this is one of my favorite ways to paint an entire metallic model as I think it creates a very interesting effect. Afterwards, I added some white aluminum just to make sure the paint would look slightly brighter. One thing that's important to note, if you want to create a similar armor effect, you gotta make sure your primer is slightly glossy. That's the key to this effect. For my dry brushing, I use my homemade dry brushing palette, which essentially gets most of the paint off. As a result, the metallic creates this very interesting depth effect that I really enjoy. And while it might not seem like much is happening, when you actually compare it to a model that's primed, you'll see the massive difference between it. Afterwards, I proceeded to grab my favorite acrylic wash, this time making sure I had no isopropyl alcohol in it. Instead, a very large amount of flow improver just to make sure that it doesn't actually stain the armor and just creates a much more shaded effect and darkens some of the areas. Then I painted the arm black as well as the shoulder pad and the knee pad. Uh, this is the areas that I'll begin creating the hazard stripe effects and also I decided to not paint the other shoulder black as it felt like it would just look a bit cooler and metallic. For my lines, I decided to draw them in freehand rather than use something like masking tape as it just felt like it'd be more interesting and I'm always looking for practice on freehand. And straight lines felt like the easiest thing I could possibly practice on. And I gotta tell you, boy was I wrong. This essentially boiled down to me drawing a white line, trying to fix it with a little bit of black, then once again trying to fix a little bit of the black areas with a little bit of the white paint. And around and around we went until I came to the conclusion that I'm never going to have perfect lines, so I'll just settle for what I have. I also played around with the idea of adding some of these scratch marks. Now to make them yellow, I'll be using Contrast Imperial Fist Paint, which I find works really well. And when I began applying it, the whole model just started to come together and I instantly realized that this project was actually a really cool idea as the yellow just somehow made it look really cool. And also Hazard Stripes are just generally really awesome. I also slightly overdid with the yellow paint, so I ended up coming in back with the black just to remove some of the green color that ended up generating there. In the process, also smudging my paint a tiny bit, but it happens. I also proceeded to then do the same thing to the shoulder and the knee pad. Which in hindsight, I think if I was to do the pattern again, I'd probably do it in a different sort of line matter. I then grabbed some of the exhaust manifold and started to create this weathering effect as well as started to highlight my armor. When applied as a pure layer, it will finally reveal that very slight golden hue that this paint has, which again shocked me that iron is apparently this exact color, at least in its raw minnow form. I then thought I should add a little bit extra weathering to the leg area as I felt like it'd be probably the most prominent area for the paint to begin scratching off. This was also when I got the crazy idea in my mind to just go absolutely crazy with my brush and create this effect that this paint has been just getting scratched and rubbed off all over the place. Ironically, this gamble paid off extremely well as it ended up creating this very cool effect that I just found really awesome. I also thought that this model could use some really cool OSL that would make it just pop a little bit more. For which, I'll be using this red acrylic ink, which has a very transparent property. In the end, I actually ended up painting over almost all of this area. However, it was still very helpful to use it as a guideline 
for where I should be placing my highlights. Afterwards, placing a white dot in the center, similar to what you would do with an eye. Then I mix some of the red ink with some white paint and begin to create some of these edge highlight areas that help to sell the OSL effect. I also felt like my weapon was looking a little bit barren and simple, so I decided to do some very simple highlights by just mixing some white into black. Afterwards, adding a tiny bit of white again to the black mix I had and creating this final highlight and also doing the little bit of edge work. I'm normally not a big fan of edge highlighting, however for this weapon, it definitely felt like it would be a very good fit. Afterwards, I began to paint his face using simple Bugman Glow mixed in with a little bit of black paint. Afterwards, I mixed in a little bit of white into that mix and this is the moment where I realized I might have gone a little bit too hard on the white. So I grabbed some of the Bugman Glow, thinned it with some water and applied it over the face as essentially a very thin glaze. Then grabbing some of this AK Deep Red to essentially create a much more coherent OSL highlight by adding it to the face area. Applying it as a very thin glaze just to build up on the area where I think the light will be hitting it. That also made me realize that the color is much more saturated than the ink I was using so I ended up glazing over some of those areas which ended up creating a much more interesting and much more vibrant OSL effect. Afterwards, it was time to paint some skulls, so I ended up grabbing some British khaki. I started off by applying it in a very few thin layers and slowly building up to the actual color on its own, which created a very cool decaying skull look. Afterwards, adding a tiny amount of white paint to that mix and to create some of the highlights that are much more bone color. When I was done with that, I felt like the model could actually use a little bit of that white aluminum as edge highlighting to some of the areas, hopefully accentuating the armor pieces even more and just making them pop off the model. For my second model, I actually painted them way faster and I essentially used a speed painting approach. And surprisingly, these turn out looking very similar. However, up close, you can definitely tell there's a big difference in time. And with that, it's time to see the final result.